Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview with the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are author Tom Miller and actor Colin Michael Day. Author Tom Miller has a degree in geology from the University of Southern California. He's completed over a thousand scuba diving dives. He has a thousand hours of piloting small planes to Lear jets, and he's um, sailed through the Pacific, he's run three marathons, and I understand you lecture on cruising the canals of Europe. How do you know about that? Uh, actually, we owned a barge in Europe. Oh, you did? Yes, we did. So we, where did it go? Uh, we kept it in the Netherlands, and oh. uh, we cruised the Netherlands and Belgium and France. That's fantastic. With how many people? Uh, my wife and I and a crew, mostly. Is that right? Yes. And Do we, we went not t not uh, taking people on like a no no no. This was a private barge, and it was it was absolutely amazing. It was well, just a how great did time. how did geology come into this? <laughs> <laughs> Why major in geology? Uh, geology was something I just found that I really enjoyed. When it, you were at SC? Uh, yes, absolutely. I just uh, where'd you go to high school? Uh, Palisades High, Pacific oh, Palisades. Oh, so you were like right from here, right from our city. And, Born and raised here. And Palisades High and the Palisades, I can see where you would be a scuba diver, where you'd be interested in the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> where you'd be like really healthy and want to run marathons. Was that a big influence, uh, your place where you were living? Um, I think as much where I was living and then also my father. Oh, to tell us about that. Fortunately, well, my father introduced me to scuba diving, to flying, to sailing. These were the things that you know, I, I did growing up. But why was he flying? He was flying for business purposes. Oh, I see, I see. So did all of these sporting um, adventures that you had lead to the novel? They didn't necessarily lead to the novel, but... <laughs> A number of the scenes, a lot of the action, you know, because of my experience, uh, allowed me to incorporate some of the things that, that have gone on in my life into the novel. And the novel is The Wave, your first time novelist. That's correct. And was it exciting to be published for the first time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's it, exciting for me to have you be published. <laughs> it, it really is. It, it's really, uh, I'm just... I can't tell you how exciting it is. So when you were on your barge, were you thinking about writing? Were you taking notes? Did you go to workshops for writing? How did you actually you know, put it, everything down? It, it's interesting. Not so much on the barge. Uh, prior to having the barge, we had a sailboat. Oh, so you, oh, you were sailing the I'm Pacific a sailor. then, right? Yes, I'm a sailor, and that's, and that's what I, I enjoy the most. Did you sail for other people? I mean, did you hire out as a captain? No, no, no. I, I had my Never? own boat. Never. <laughs> No, but that, and we had that, uh, the last sailboat we owned, we had for eight years, and it did 65,000 miles throughout the Pacific. You're kidding. And that's what you uh, lectured about, too? Yes. And, and did you, who did you lecture to? Uh, basically, yacht clubs. Oh, very interesting. So. so, did you give them tips on what to do, or just about the areas you were in? No, more about the areas. Like a travel log? Exactly. Ah. And when you were doing this, were you keeping a diary? Um, photo diary. And yes, you know what, I, as a matter of fact, and then I would take notes and, and keep because notes. Because photo, photo diary also jogs your memory, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and then you wrote notes. And then when you started writing the novel, how did you physically do it? How did you, did you sit down with a pen and paper or did you sit at a computer? Uh, you, I couldn't, I can't read my own writing. <laughs> oh, so you didn't write. <laughs> no, no, it's a computer, absolutely. Did you? And yes. you knew what to do? How did you know what to do? Um, this is actually the second novel that I've written. 
Mm -hmm. And I, the first one, like so many authors, is still sitting on the shelf. I couldn't sell it. Okay, well maybe you didn't know how to write it. How did you know how to write this? <laughs> well, I did take a number of classes and oh, attended seminars. Oh, you did? Where were uh, those? Uh, San Diego, and I'm a member of the Greater Los Angeles Writers Society, and okay. we have speakers come in all the time. and subscribe to some of the various writing periodicals. So you were like self-educating yourself. Exactly. In fact, as a child, I hated writing. I, I was actually dyslexic. Oh, so it was hard. Well, I, I couldn't read. And fortunately, my parents sent me to a speed reading course because they didn't know about dyslexia. Because I was going to say, how hard is that for a dyslexic kid? It's not easy. So they sent me to a speed reading course, and the way they, they, they taught me to speed read is the same way that they treat dyslexia. Oh, backwards? <laughs> Forward? Well, they, they, they have this machine, and they flash words in front of you at a 500th of a second. Oh, so and it's like somehow that. it rewires the brain. So, but it, it's, it's worse than that even as far as my, my writing career. Because in junior high, I had decided that my English courses weren't going to be of any value to me because I was going to be a general contractor like my father. Oh, I see. I got it. <laughs> and, and sail. Well, <laughs> and fly. No, my father always had a secretary. Oh, I see. And I was going to have a secretary that was going to write all of my letters for me. Well, she could have written your novel if you could tell the story, right? No, because, no. you know, I ultimately, I started my own construction company. I had a secretary. Uh, and I, I had the company for 30 years, and for 30 years I never did find a secretary that could write a letter. Oh, please. <laughs> so there you were, stuck. Stuck with the wave. <laughs> and at some point I discovered, you know, I actually sort of like this. That's great. Yeah. Well, getting back to the story, t tell us a little bit about the story of the wave. Well, the wave is a story about basically the catastrophic collapse of Mauna Loa, the largest uh, volcano in the world and the subsequent tsunami that will be generated. And how much research did you do on the tsunami part? Because that's a big, that's what causes the wave, right? Well, it's the actual, you know, it's the landslide, the, uh, the debris uh, coming down off the mountain, it's the collapse of the mountain that actually causes the landslide, the displacement of all that water. And then it, oh, and then it displaces it. Right. But, so, we can call this a tsunami thriller taking place in Hawaii. Um, and what exactly is a tsunami then? Uh, it's a wave generated by earthquakes or landslides, uh, possibly an asteroid striking the ocean, something other than wind. Oh, and and is it, does it have to take place in the ocean? Uh, there have been freshwater tsunamis caused by landslides. So the land, the land moving? It's the land moving, oh, but they're landslides of, of dimensions that are hard to comprehend even. Um, in, if we look back in the geologic record, uh, at the Hawaiian Islands, uh, we see landslides that are 5,000 cubic kilometers. That's over 1,000 cubic miles. Is that right? Yeah. Hard to believe something that large striking the ocean, traveling at as much as 120 miles an hour for 20, 30, 40 miles. And, yeah, it is, it is hard to, to think about. Uh, and you were in Hawaii. Did, did you live in Hawaii for a while so that you could experience? No, working? actually I was commuting. My, my company had work in Hawaii for 16 oh. years straight. Oh, it was. So you I've knew the area. I've spent a lot of time in Hawaii. And then my sailboat was there. Oh, so I So we see. sailed the islands also. So. Are they, or are we, still in danger of this tsunami situation? Well, the scenario described in the book is a worst case scenario. Uh, this is the, the catastrophic collapse of, uh, actually it's the largest mountain in the world if you look at from the, the very floor of the ocean to the top of the mountain. Uh, and I think the chances of that happening are probably pretty slim, but that doesn't mean that they're there aren't some real dangers lurking off of the southeast coast of the Big Island of Hawaii. And I, and I address those in the book. You, um, part of it, you go down, what, 6,000 feet? The submersible, yes. And what is that, a submersible? Uh, it's basically a small submarine capable of going much deeper than, you know, 
the average uh, and and how is that possible do people use those things is that true is that a true submersible absolutely in your book? yes it's it, hard to figure out what's what's real and what isn't <laughs> real when you're reading a novel so you uh -huh. could take it like a documentary almost of something that could happen well you know as a novel we, we try and put as much real in this honest. Can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got to right. be as honest as you can keep it. <laughs> right. Uh, otherwise, people just uh, you know they, they don't believe it, and so and there's there's an awful lot of facts in the novel. So is there a submersible? Submersible. Submersible. <laughs> submersible. <laughs> Absolutely. Not only is there a submersible, but it's called a Pisces Five. There's a Pisces Four also. They're operated by the University of Hawaii, just like in the uh, the novel. And uh, the vessel that they operate off of is called the Coke. Um, and it's a long Hawaiian name, but that's what the, uh, uh, the crew members call it. We, um, we have Charlie, Ch Chuck Palmer, who's uh, the, the narrator. Is that you? Uh, there are parts of me in Chuck Palmer. I see. It's but, not, but Chuck Palmer's not all me. But he has a fearless best friend. Is that you? <laughs> no, that's definitely not me. That's not you. <laughs> Um, and then what, what we, when I was reading the press notes and we were talking about going 6,000 feet under, I, I kept seeing James Cameron's name coming up. Do we see a film anywhere here? Uh, as we speak, uh, there's, a, there's someone who's turning the book into a screenplay. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to sell it as a screenplay, but we're going to try. So, so there is this excitement. It's pretty hard to make these underwater films, though, and all this on the water stuff. Um, well, I think Cameron does a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we so we'll mention him again. Do we have another thriller on the horizon? Um, yes, I'm working on a book right now. Is it about flying this time? Uh, a little bit, but not so much. Uh, I, I, mean, I can leave you with a thought about the book. Okay. Um, Chuck Palmer is the protagonist. Just oh, we like have in the Chuck way. again. Yeah, okay. This is actually a, the, the book I'm working on now is actually a prequel. Oh, because we're be I've destroyed everything with the wave. I see. Uh, but one of his Chuck is a uh, personal trainer that works at a gym in Malibu, and one of his clients is a physicist, and he's invented a camera. I won't go into the science behind the camera, but in essence, it allows one to look back in time. Oh, fabulous. So, so that's where we're going to look. I think this geology has really been a big influence on you, I think, without I think that class. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy geology. Uh, when you think what, what the Earth has gone through, what it's taken to create what we, we now have, and, and, and you look at the mountains and, and you realize how fluid they are. Pretty tough, huh? It, it's just amazing for me. Well, we thank you so much for being with us today. and. We'll watch for Chuck Palmer, even though it's not you. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thanks uh, for watching this part of the show. We'll be right back with actor Colin Michael Day. Hi. Welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with my guest, actor Colin Michael Day, who was a business major while he was setting records on the tennis team at Denver University. Uh, when he stopped to think, of course, he said, uh, I think I'll speak to my parents, who are both scientists, because he didn't want to play tennis anymore. <laughs> Is that what happened? And then you changed to become a theater major. Yeah, well, um, it was actually, well, I decided to make, I wanted to make the switch. And I'm like, oh, I've actually got to go talk to my parents. And, <laughs> you know, I played Division One tennis, you know. And You're I'm, like this big tennis yeah. star <laughs> making, and making Denver University so proud of you, right? Yeah, yeah. And the city where you were born and raised. Very much the city. I mean, the tennis community, like, it's big, but it's actually kind of small as well so everyone knows who you are you know so when you make a switch like that you kind of find out who your true friends are oh uh, yeah probably. well oh, I bet yeah. no they but they were probably really showboating with you right because you were like hot stuff yeah uh, you know it was fun it was great I mean a little bit of hot stuff but then you know when you become a theater major <laughs> but here you are you were an athlete you wanted to be an athlete right mm -hmm. and you were practicing five days 
five hours every day, five days, seven days. Yeah. Um, and that didn't leave room for anything else in your life, no, did it? It was school, tennis, and partying. <laughs> Part oh, you got that in? You know, I got to slip that in there. You, know? <laughs> you did need get a, that in. <laughs> need a little bit of an experience. Um, but but how know. did you become such a good tennis player? <sighs> got practice. Um, did you start early? I started very young. I was like four years old. Oh, they gave you a tennis mm -hmm, racket? And the tennis racket was playing. So, yeah, I played juniors, like all, the, um, all these national tournaments growing up. So, and you're yeah. tall. Is that tall. an advantage? Um, yeah, it is an advantage, but it's, it's a different type of game in tennis, actually. Like, the smaller guys are quicker, more baseliner. Um, I'm more of a serve and volleyer, so I have, like, bigger serve, come up to net attacking. It's oh, right attacking, away, you so. scare them with your Yeah, height. you know, you kind of, like, get up to net and, like, see if you can get by me. So. And if a short one comes up, I can't see over the net. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you've got it made. Were your parents interested in athletics? Oh, yeah, they all play sports. My, oh, they uh, all do? Yeah, my dad played, played uh, he's from England, and he played uh, semi-pro soccer in Canada when he was going to graduate oh, school. Oh, so he there. was interested in yeah. that athletic career. Yeah, and they all play tennis. Everyone in my family played tennis. So, yeah. It was. Do you think that that, uh, being in, in Colorado, lended itself to more athletic than, like, here I am, I want to be a, the I want to be a theater major mm -hmm. now. I mean, that's kind of off, isn't it? Being in the theater? Um, but no, actually, Denver has a pretty oh. cool theater uh, community, actually. I shouldn't say that, because I get things from them all the time yeah, uh, about their... The thing. big Denver Performing Arts right. is one of the biggest in the nation, yeah. actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, industry-wise, it's not like L.A. That's what I meant, no. industry-wise. They mm -hmm. bring a lot into the city, yeah. and they give you a lot of culture. And that one section where there's two or three theaters, and mm -hmm. then the big opera yeah. house, and... That's, so so you have yeah. places to go, and you the library is fantastic. Oh, the library is great. The library is awesome. Um, yeah, so there, there are places to go, but if you really want to, you know, go for it, and Denver is probably not the main hub that you can start. I yeah, mean, you can yeah. do some stuff there. But. I was thinking about that as far as um, film. Like, did you have film opportunities there? Um, films are shot there, um, but not necessarily to do the casting. In Denver, you know, they'll do a lot of the <laughs> casting in LA or New York or something like that. And then maybe if they need somebody, they'll do a small casting in Denver. But it's not like huge, there's not projects all the time. So it's did like you, one every yeah. year. Did you like finish your schooling in the theater mm -hmm. and then you went to Australia to study? Well, I studied while I was in school. Oh, you actually. did? So I was studying abroad. Oh, you, at, okay. Uh, Tell you know, us about that. Why did you do that? Um, well, I'd been to Australia before and I have family there. Um, wow. And that live in Sydney, and I loved Australia. And uh, you know, I traveled a lot growing up, but I don't, there was something about Australia that I really liked. Why and did you travel a lot? Your father traveled. Your family traveled. Family. I have a huge international <laughs> family. My dad's uh, one of eight oh, kids. Oh, oh. Um, so I have a lot spread of all over. spread all over. And he's, you know, and he's from England, so they're all over in England, Europe. And then. My uh, my dad's mom, my grandmother, her brother had seven kids in Sydney. Oh, so all oh my, in Sydney. So yeah, you had family. Tons oh. of family around uh, around the so world. So that's a great opportunity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so you studied there. Yeah, and uh, I studied at the University of New South Wales. Oh. Um, in theater and some other electives, but I actually got to perform in the Sydney Opera House. Did you? Yeah, I did the importance of being sales. an artist. <laughs> the yeah, sales. Yeah, the sales and everything. <laughs> it looks way better on the outside. The inside actually is kind of boring. It's kind of like close, isn't it? Well, no, it's pretty big. It's just, it's No, plain. the seats are yeah, close. Yeah, the seats are close. Right. Yes, the seats are very close. But I it, remember the seats being very close. You studied with uh, Elizabeth Metznick. Yes. And what kind of um, acting did she teach? Uh, the Meisner. And how? Definitely. what is that? How different is that? Um... Different. Well, it's uh, or how the same is it? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of there's there's a few techniques, you know, and um, it's uh, they're all kind of formed from uh, Stanislavski, who's uh, the Russian teacher, famous Russian teacher. But um, it's really all about um, finding your inner emotion. Uh, and that's everything. what she make, was teaching. Yeah, making it real. It's a two-year program. I mean, like it's intense, intense. A lot of people don't make it through it. Oh, I didn't realize it was two years. Yeah, it's a two-year program. Um, you really have to dedicate yourself. and all, all, it does, A lot of people can't handle it. They don't like the emotions that come out. They're like, whoa, this is weird. You know, type of stuff. Other people just don't get it. Because the technique's not for everybody. You know, there's a, there's a lot of techniques out there. And I always tell actors, I'm like, find one that works for you. I mean, Meisner worked for me. I loved it. Loved you? Everything so about you it. fell right into fell it. Fell right into it. It was hard. But that's but what they said. I, I think um, 
when I was reading about what your family, how your family reacted, your family said they always thought you'd be an actor. Yeah, right, that's what why, my mom why? said. Why? I thought that was cute. Well, I mean, I've always been that kind of character. You know, I'm outgoing. You know, uh -huh. I like to talk. So she thought. Personal. <laughs> but I was always, um, I did act when I was growing up. As you like, I was in plays and yeah, stuff, but I was I always see. like, I'm an athlete. I see. And I everything. See. And, but I was always good. Everyone's like, oh, you're so natural and everything. Like, do you want to do anything That's... with acting? I'm like, no. <laughs> No, no, well, <laughs> you didn't want to do anything with acting, but you did all that studying, and then you had this film, The Loneliest Road in America. Yes. How did that happen? Um, well, I came out to L.A. with one of my best friends, roommate, and uh, Mardana McGinnis, who is also the writer-director. Mardana. Of, yeah, Mardana, uh, who's the writer-director on the movie. And we, we came out to L.A. with a plan that we wanted to do our own projects anyways. So we came up with the idea to do a feature film. Did you write it? He wrote it. Oh, he uh, wrote it? I mean, we came up with the idea together. We did an outline and everything. He did the bulk of the writing. And Where's had, he from? Uh, he's from uh, Northern Cal. Uh, oh, he's from Potter, California. Powder Valley. Because yeah, he has a kind of a funny, different name. Yeah. It sounds like a European name. No. Uh, pff, Mardana? I think it's Persian. Um, oh. I think it's a Persian name. Uh -huh. or, uh, but he's from up or north? South. Yeah, he's from up north. And um, yeah, but we met at the University of Denver. Oh, so, oh. Yeah, that's so you've known each other mm -hmm. a long time. Well, like a few years, yeah. actually. We met kind of our junior year in college. And and you saw his talent, and he saw your talent? Yeah, and uh, actually, to be honest, we were not best of friends when we first <laughs> met. <laughs> you know, like it was a little bit of a butting heads type of thing, and then, you know, it really... Then it all worked? Yeah, it all worked, and uh, we moved out here together. We still live together. Oh, do you? Yeah, still live together. <laughs> so, so, so you decided on this film, and mm -hmm. you were going to produce it? Yeah, we both were going to produce. We had we got other producers as well, like Corinne, uh, Corinne, who uh, who also produced it and like that. But uh, yeah, we were kind of the creators. In and a then, way. did you script it? Script it. Uh huh. Um, you wrote all. Yeah. He wrote everything. Yes. I, yes. You know why? When I first thought heard about the loneliest road in America, I thought it was a documentary, <laughs> but it is not a it documentary. Not a documentary. No. So I was thinking, you had to, did, did you just follow that red car, which is the red car, yeah, the, the jeep, <laughs> <laughs> the jeep, and you met all kinds of people on the road, and then I wondered, oh, did they script it after that? Well, um, actually, Mardana had been to all these small towns before with his dad like years oh, ago. So he picked where to so go. So he picked where well, kids. He kind of wrote this outline in college about this movie and then we just brought it up and critiqued it more and we actually went on a scouting trip which was awesome. Was it great? It was great. <laughs> it was great. And um, did you meet a lot of different people along the so way? so many different people. Like the people that are in these towns are characters. Like, did amazing. he change his, what he had yes. written as he was going? We changed the scripts <laughs> because we met people along the way and it was uh, yeah, it was great. Like great stuff that you you can't you can't just no. think it up. You're like no. wow, you but, can't make you it can't up. Make that <laughs> I know. Up. We said something the other night. I went, you can't make up that kind of dialogue. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so you did do that, yeah. and then but you weren't thinking about being in it at the time when you were getting the project off the ground. No, we were. I was. You were. I mean, he knew. I mean. I went, I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm like the actor yeah. of the group. So, uh, and you're the writer and I'm yeah, the actor. Yeah, he's the writer, director. But I'm you the had actor. to audition. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was going to play one of the parts. And originally, Mardana wanted me to play the Matt character. Oh, I see. Who was the other character. I was actually okay with that at first. But then the more I read the script, the more I really wanted to play the Jamie character. I just really thought it was more challenging. And like I could play the Matt character. Like I knew I could play that. I wanted something that was going to be tough, it was right. going to be challenging, it going to be hard, I'm going to have to go to a new, different place right. and everything, and uh, yeah. Get your emotions out. Get, uh, re yeah, get, get really going deep. What you trained for. Exactly, this is what I trained for, I'm like, I want that, that's what I want. Um, but uh, I mean, it, and I totally get, well, it wasn't It wasn't Mardana, like Mardana actually, you know, he had confidence in me, but it was everyone else on the project that I wasn't sure, like Colin's never done a act in a feature oh, yeah, film before. Yeah. Okay, so. and then but but and then the cinematographer. Mm -hmm. How'd you get him? Tony McGrath. Uh, we got him. Mardana worked for Believe Media, which is a commercial house, and met Tony through that. And we just kind of started partying with Tony, hanging out. You know, he's a you know a really big commercial. Because TV. it looked like beautiful. The, I know the beautiful. scenery is fantastic, and you mm -hmm. think how can somebody photograph this scenery like that? Yeah. And actually, it does have that feel of a commercial. Where, where you want to show everything. Yeah, 
he shows everything and the way he follows the car. And then he and, follows the car. Uh, so you were lucky. Very lucky. Getting that. Well, we actually brought him on the scouting trip. He had not decided to do it, and he read the script uh -huh. while we were doing the scouting trip I for see. the movie. And we're having all these experiences. He's like, I, I want to shoot this. So this was a challenge for everyone. Everyone. I mean, you changed the, the character that you wanted to, mm -hmm. to be, and he wasn't really sure he wanted to do it. Well, he wasn't And the sure. writer kept changing yeah, the script. I mean, uh, that was all right. Um, and to, like, all of them were like, so I made a deal with them like I will uh, I will go to the callbacks like do the auditions I will go to the callbacks oh, I see. so we can pick all the people that you think while you're together I mean you know, where you were auditioning and yeah. with other so people I, yeah I'd be like let's go through all the auditions I see. and then at the callbacks everyone that we think's good I will audition with them I see we'll, that's what you that's how exactly, you did it and that's how I did it and I want it out so and and you are um, a part of the company at the Elephant Theater Company. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you had to audition to get into that probably yes. too. Yes. That's a fantastic little theater. It is. It's, it's on a... Lillian Way in yeah. Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you done a lot of stage work there? Um, I'm beginning to do a lot Are of stage you? work there. I was in the block. I was in the play Block Nine um, that just won uh, LA Weekly Awards Best oh, Production, good. Best okay. Director. Uh, which is great, and we were nominated for Best Ensemble. But yeah, because it's a that. fabulous, I love that little theater row yeah. there. Oh, it's great. And it's good for you to be there. Uh, what, before we leave, what did you learn from sports that you helped you in your acting career? Like, to keep going, keep like, um, and getting kind of into his own. I mean, like, it's a lot, like, you have to have the confidence that you're going to win in sports. Like, even if you lose, you have to, you lose, you learn from losing. So I think it's kind of you're the same down here. The you're, you learn from rejection. Mm -hmm. here. I mean, a lot of actors get rejected, and not just in acting, but a lot of this industry. It's not, you know, <laughs> it can be lonely, it can be depressing at times, but you're going to get through it. You know, you're always going to get through it. So, it. so your sports did help you in your acting career? Oh, big time. Yeah. Big time. I mean, uh, I, and when I'm acting, I go, like in tennis, I go into a zone, like I'm there. I'm like in the moment. That's what sports are. Acting's the same way. You have to live in the moment while you're on stage or on film yeah. and listening to your, you know, fellow, to, yeah. you can not be off, like what's the <laughs> camera guy doing or something like that. You have to stay in it yeah. all the time, you know, until, until cut, until the, the show's over. Well, we're here. Uh, you stayed in it. <laughs> Thank you, Colin, Thank for you. being with us today. Appreciate and it. keep emailing me at J-A-Q-U-I-N-N, -N, the numeral one, at AOL.com, and write to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017. We'll see you next time on the...